Hello, everyone, and thank you for attending today's session of our live online learning series. I'm here with Marianne Post, who's going to be covering Audio Efficiency Tips Volume 2. So we're so excited to have her. Just quickly for those following us on Zoom, webinar is being recorded and your audio is muted. You can ask questions using the questions field. Those of you that are watching us on the social feed, give us a shout out. Let us know where you're watching us from. We love your feedback as well. Um, and again, these sessions will be recorded and posted back to avid.com. So most of you know Marianne, she's done so many of these sessions for us. She's our Avid Master Instructor, and she's also currently updating the book as well for Media Composer. Uh, so Mary Ann, as usual, we have so much to get to and so little time, so I will go ahead and hand it over. All right. Thanks, Don. Hi, everybody. I hope everybody is doing well. And yep, today is uh, audio session part two, efficiency tips. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen right away. Here, we'll go jump in and then just make sure I get my Zoom audio. So if Don needs to come in at all, looks good today. Okay. So this is all about efficiency tips. Okay. So this is all about efficiency tips and I took it from the standpoint of workflow. So in last week's session, if you didn't catch that, I recommend going back if you've had questions about how to bring your audio into the system efficiently, setting it up in the bin, making changes in the source and bin. Uh, and then we wrapped up by um, structuring the timeline with uh, checkerboarding the audio for voices. So you can see I have one character on A1 and one character on A2, so that's kind of checkerboarding. So giving every voice its own track. Uh, so this was kind of where we left off with a, a fairly simple setup. And then now we're ready to go into some mixing tips. And since we're taking it from the efficiency standpoint, it's not gonna be getting into the nitty gritty so much of what your level should be but how to efficiently make those ch changes as you're working to get your levels where you want them to be. So I'm gonna load a different sequence. So I have a sequence here that's longer than what we were kind of introing and putting together last week. And I've renamed all the tracks. So we actually have three characters, um, Mary on A1, the dentist on A2 and Sue who is an assistant on A3, and then a couple of effects tracks. And then I have a surround sound effect. So because it's surround, it's on its own track. I have a couple of things I wanna show you guys with that. And then stereo music. So as you can see, I have a mix of mono and stereo. So some of the options I'm gonna show you today will help you decide too, if you're still not quite sure how to bring it in to the system, how you might want to structure your channels into tracks as they come into Media Composer. Okay, so um, levels. You can make levels and overall levels adjustments in two locations, the timeline or the audio mixer. So I'm gonna just play around with a couple of options in the effects. And the reason I'm doing that is because you'll see effects one and effects two. And if I zoom in, I'm gonna grab the zoom slider at the bottom of the timeline for now. You can use command or control on windows in your left and right brackets to zoom in, zoom out as well. Okay, so last week we put together these footsteps, okay? And they're, two, they're dual mono tracks as opposed to the voice, which is just single mono. So that's a consideration when we're making levels adjustments. Uh, same with, I have this, uh, just a stinger that comes in as well as just a quick sound effect singer, which is why it's in the effects track and not a music track. Okay, so I'm actually gonna solo these a moment. So if I wanna make my adjustments in the timeline, I wanna make sure that I call up in my track control panel, uh, the adjustments I wanna work with. And so in this case, it's gonna be clip gain, but I don't wanna just bring it up for just one track, I wanna bring it up for a couple tracks. So I could go to the menu twice, or if I'm gonna be working through my whole timeline, I'll hold down my option key, Alt on Windows, and click this menu, call up whatever I need, clip gain, 
it calls it all up. So same for like waveforms. So option clicking will turn on all the waveforms, turn them all off. All right, so that's tip number one. When I'm working in the timeline, if you do have dual mono, you will want to select both those tracks. So I've just selected A4 and A5, and I'm going to zoom in a little bit further. Um, and you can see there's a little bit of adjustments already on this. So uh, if I want to make further adjustments, rather than going to the gain control, which is just going to do one at a time, so the mini fader, what I want to do is use the keyboard shortcuts. And it's shift option up and down arrows. We'll do the sh keyboard shortcuts together. Okay, so shift option up and down arrow. Um, if you do need to reset these when you're in your timeline, it's option click the mini fader can reset them. So if you need to uh, make those adjustments. I love making my adjustments in the timeline because uh, I can stay focused in one region. So it's great for clip by clip adjustments. Now, when it comes, what about a group of clips like this, which also can be hard sometimes to focus on zoom in on and see the group. So when I start getting into group options, that's when I wanna go into my audio mixer to make my change. And if you're on a single monitor system, which I happen to be on, uh, the audio workspace can be super helpful. So I just click the audio workspace. It rearranges windows. If you've been coming to my sessions, you see me use the effects workspace a lot on a single monitor system. Um, same idea. So now I'm in my audio mixer and you can see that um, lots and lots of faders. Okay? And I don't have much of an audio background. I have just enough to get the quality as high as possible without being an expert. So uh, all of these faders, I tend to be one of those people who grabs the wrong ones. I have to be super mindful. Now, as I'm working with the footsteps here, if I wanna make an adjustment, I just pause my playhead, park my playhead over it. Um, you know you're over it because you'll actually have slider adjustments. You'll have fader adjustments. If I'm not there anywhere where there's no clip, you won't. So. The efficiency tip is how do I do both at the same time, both uh, tracks? Well, you can group them because right now, if I make an adjustment or reset, you can reset in the audio mixer. I just option clicked Alt on Windows. Now I've just reset those. But right now I'm making separate adjustments. That's not very efficient. So you have group buttons at the top. So I'm gonna go ahead and click group for the ones I want to be tied together. And now when I lower my levels or boost my levels, uh, they work together. So then with playback, so you always want to be playing back your changes to see if it's where you want it to be. Um, then you, with, you're going to make a change to a group. You want to make sure you're back over it. I'm just going to lower this just a little bit more. Okay, so we'll say that's good. Of course, you're going to play it back until it's at the level you need it to be. Um, you know, to say, oh yeah, that'll be perfect. So now I want to apply this to the other footsteps. It all came from the same sound effect, and they're, even though the variations in the heel toe are a little bit different, they're all the same level. So what I'm going to do is mark an in before the first one, mark an out after the last one. So I'm just using I and O on my keyboard, park my playhead over the one I adjusted. Okay, so I can see there's my adjustment. This is key. Uh, if you go over one of the other ones, it's going to follow that. And then under the fast menu, you have set level on track into out. Now, if this says global, that's because you didn't set in and out. Or if you need global for an entire track, like a voice track, uh, you'll want to make sure you don't have any marks. So I'm going to set that. And now as I kind of click over these, you'll see they're all at that level I adjusted. So using the in to out in the audio mixer is great. So anytime I'm doing a group, I tend to use the audio mixer. I'm just going audio clip by audio clip by audio clip. I tend to do it in my timeline, okay? Um, a note about pan, which is gonna bring me to the fly here. Uh, so hopefully this will play out. You guys will be able to hear this okay. Okay. 
Um, depending on what where you're listening, uh, you could kind of hear the fly moving around. It's surround sound. Now, I don't have a surround setup, but I do get just a little bit of that feel in stereo. Uh, if you're going to make adjustments, notice that I don't get any pan control adjustments for the fly layer, okay, for that track. Um, that's because it's surround, it was built in. Now, if you want to make pan adjustments, surround pan adjustments, or if that's gonna end up being your job, depending like if you're in a, a, a budget savvy project where you're kind of doing it all, you wanna bring in your sounds, uh, your 5.1 as individual tracks, because then you'll get the surround panner, okay? So if you're been in Media Composer, like my pan doesn't look anything like this. That's because uh, when I was doing setup yesterday, I, or yesterday, earlier, I uh, set this to 5.1 instead of stereo. So this might be what you're more used to. So regardless, my five, anything that's a 5.1, 7.1, you're not going to have control over. That's done elsewhere. But if you have mono tracks, you can make adjustments. So for example, if for some reason this, uh, let me just enable it. If this one came in, um, yeah, my sliders, my dial is not working. Let's see if I go to a different clip if it'll kick in for me. There we go. Yeah, and I'm not sure what was going on at the first clip, but notice I could change my pan or if you come to a clip that suddenly it's panned right or left and you need it to be mono, you can option, I'll click on this to make it center as well. So you can adjust the pan. Uh, if I'm in a situation where I have like 5.1 or 7.1 and I have them all individually in my timeline, then you'll be able to use the surround pan. And when you do that, there's a button below this little pan icon and you click that and you make your adjustments. So you can do all the fronts, backs, rears, all that for each individual track okay you can reset these individual controls as well if you need to and then when you're done you just hit close okay so if you are going to be doing surround pan on your own mono tracks and then um coming into the surround panner so if you're wondering gee why would i ever bring anything in mono it depends on if the panning was done or not it's like ideally yes but uh, if not, there you go. Bring them in as mono tracks, and then you have to make your adjustments at the track level. Okay, so that gets us some audio mixing efficiency tips. If I clear my in and out, um, I can use my fast menu. So for example, if say Mary's uh, track is kind of all over the place for whatever reason for uh, the pan, I could set one to mid and then just go to the fast menu and notice it says set love or set pan on track global. That's just because I don't have any in, ins and outs. So this menu is driven by in and out marks in your timeline. Okay, so hopefully that's uh, making sense for you. Uh, next up is going to be working with some EQ. Okay. Now, a couple tips that I always, uh, hints that I always give my students when it comes to EQ, we tend to be so great at visuals. I'm not the best at sound. Uh, it can be, feel a little overwhelming and I totally get that. So EQ, making levels adjustments at various frequencies or pitch is how I like to describe it to help visual artists. Uh, an easy way to get started and just really see here what audio EQ does is just to go to the audio EQ tool. So tools menu at the top, audio EQ. And it's a basic EQ that once you get going, uh, you probably will move on to the other effects that I'm gonna show you, but it's a great way to get started. It's the same tip I always give with like color grading make big bold changes so you could see what's being affected in audio make big bold changes so you can hear what's being affected so i'm just going to do a little bit of setup here for you to get you started i'm going to play with the dentist track so i'm going to go ahead and solo that 
And then I'm going to set an in and an out because the reason I like to do that is that if I'm testing or making adjustments, and it's not just for this EQ tool, it's for any EQ adjustments, I can use the play loop. <laughs> Um, and the random clip I chose isn't the greatest one. So let me just pick something else here. You're not running out on me, are you? No, that's a good one. So just play around with this line a moment. I'll zoom in a bit. I'm going to command uh, right bracket control on Windows. Okay, so now when I play loop. You're not running out on me, are you? It'll play around You're my in and out. Me, are you? Okay. So this is a three band EQ, meaning it's got three adjustments. If you have a seven band EQ, which is the, the audio suite type effects, that's going to be seven adjustments. One band is one adjustment and so forth. What's great about this one is there's some presets you can play around with. Um, some of them have you can control. Some of them you cannot. So if you really want to kind of start getting a feel for this tool, you want to go to something like the telephone. Let me just make this bigger. I'm on 2021.6, which is one of the recent releases where you can dynamically enlarge your audio EQ now. So what happens when I did that is it actually made an adjustment to all three of these bands. And so this one's the shell, low shelf band, so lower frequency, the bass. And then this one's higher pitch. So basically what's been happened here with the telephone is it boosts the levels around human voice, which the average for human voice is a thousand hertz. So it's actually on the, a little bit higher end of human voice. Um, so you boosted that a lot and then they totally just cut out the lower frequencies. So when you play it, and I'm gonna hit option six, alt six on Windows is the same as the pre play loop button. You're not running out on me, are you? You're not running out on me, are you? Okay, so you can kind of get that feel for what this does. It totally takes out the lower frequencies and the higher frequencies. Um, and then the other thing you can do too is just reset these option, alt click these, and any of these sliders are resettable. And just kind of play with it on your own. Um, there's a menu here, like be bold. So now I've just eliminated a lot of the lower frequencies and just see what you get. You're not running out on me, are you? Okay, so we don't have any of the bass, especially the lower frequencies of his voice. So that's my recommendation for that because you can't break it. You can't break it anyways, it's non-destructive. But it's easy then to just do a remove effect and that kind of thing and just play because it's a fairly simple interface. When it comes to where voice is, um, the, the default for this middle, which is a parametric filter, uh, so it's, you pick a set a uh, target spot. So right now, if I just let me reset that, take this down. Notice there's this dip in this graph. And that's why I like using this tool as a guide because it actually shows you what's going on um, visually. So just like we like to see things visually in waveform monitors and vector scopes with color. So around 70, 85 Hertz, I've totally dropped that out. You're not running out on me, are you? Okay, so now he has like pretty bass voice that's not very dynamic, but you can hear it. So just play with it. So then if I raise this up, you'll see that now I'm like much higher frequency and so forth. So it gives you an idea of what's being affected, whether it's the parametric filter, which has a center and then roll off. So it's not just one frequency that's being adjusted. It's being, it's a group, but not all by the same amount, kind of like with a, drop shadow when you add a feathered edge uh, or a feathered edge to an object. It's similar only with sound. All right, so hopefully that'll get you guys started. And then if you need to remove it, the good old remove effects with your track selected will do that. Okay, so then where do I get my effects once I'm all feeling good and um, confident about audio EQ and what frequencies are being adjusted and that kind of thing. I actually, you can get them from your effect palette. There's a couple of options for this. I'm gonna point out where you can do this. And then I'm gonna show you just my workflow, just so you have a, a workflow option. Um, so right now, generally when you first come to your effects palette, you'll see like your video filters, transitions. 
There's audio track effects that you can apply to an entire track. So for example, if I needed to do an EQ adjustment to all of this track, which is why we checkerboard, I can. In fact, I can just, if I drag and drop right now and hover over this, notice the whole track highlights. And then it's gonna open up this tool, which you can also, I'm just gonna cancel out a second, grab from tools and audio track effect, which is another option. But essentially it's just asking you when you drag and drop, where do you wanna put this? And you can put up to five of track effects at a time. So maybe I need an EQ, maybe I need like a compression limiter, maybe a de-esser, that's three right there. Maybe I need a, a special effect as well to change the tone of where um, they are, you know, small room versus large like cathedral, for example, or outdoor space. Um, but then I can just click this and it gets applied. So it's in the track control panel and you can see that. Um, I'm not a big drag and dropper. Um, I tend to like to, as you saw with my audio levels, I wanna work in my timeline. So when it comes to adding these, what I tend to do is right click right on one of those five options. And you, if you're near it, you're good. Um, and then there's the audio input. There's my insert A. So one effect is applied. Insert B doesn't have anything. So I can go ahead and say, okay, let's go ahead and grab my mono dynamics and let's grab that de So you can fill this up with whatever you need. So if you're wondering, well, where do you make the adjustments? You just click these. So if I click the EQ, here's the seven band EQ. Um, so that's why I start off my students who are brand new to EQ with the EQ tool. It's a little less intimidating. The good news with this is it's all color and you can kind of, interact with it. So if I'm working with his voice, which is the average is around a thousand uh, hertz or one kilohertz, and I know this is tiny display, but that says 1K or a thousand hertz, um, I can make that adjustment. So if I'm trying to boost his, his level. So up and down on this graph, another visual uh, does the level and you can actually see there's a dial moving. If you look, there's a yellow dial moving right here as I do this. So that's the gain, the level adjustment, I'm boosting it. Now I'm lowering it. I can change the target. So whereas in the EQ, you have to use that slider. So if, his, if I'm working with a female voice, maybe it's a little higher, deep male voice, you know, James or Jones style male voice, maybe the target's lower, not that he would probably ever need EQ. Um, and then there's also um, the Q, which is the range of frequencies. So if you need a narrow range and that's, so there's sliders, dials for that. The good news is it's color coordinated. So that can get you started with working with that. It's the same principle, just more adjustments. And all I did to get into this was click the EQ, okay? Um, so track effects like EQ, compressor limiter, de on those voice tracks. Uh, one more example I have, because I also I think put in the description that I'd show how to save an effect template. Um, another thing that we tend to do is what we call in class uh, search and destroy missions meaning that we want to get rid of a sound. And if it doesn't compete with human voice, it's fairly, and it's a constant sound, not like dynamic. Um, like if it's a barking dog or something, that's gonna be a challenge. But in this case, I'm using Incubate to send you a message 10 years into the future. Kiss my future great grandkids for me, okay? Okay, so notice that everything's fine, except for this one's got a, a buzz on it. So we're gonna remove that. Um, in the effects, there is audio clip too. So you can drag and drop the audio clips. This channel strip is great to work with. Um, it takes a minute to explain and running out of time. So I'm just gonna do a quick one, especially if you're new to this, to reduce it. I'm not gonna eliminate it completely. 
but if at least you can reduce it and salvage the audio clip, great. So I've got this uh, EQ one band that I could drag and drop right to the clip. If I am doing clip effects, I do like to go to the tools and audio suite instead. Okay, it's your preference, whatever works for you. So if I go to audio suite, I've got my track selected and then there's a menu which has pretty much the same available options as you see in the audio clip tab in the effects palette. So for this one, if I wanna do like the one band, the clip effects are non real time, you get the blue dot. So you'll wanna instantly come into the audio suite effects. There's this plugin, you click the plugin icon and then you're in. So this is very similar look to what I was just looking with the one, the uh, seven band. It's just one band. And in a search and destroy mission, generally you're going to want a really narrow queue. Um, and you can see your queue by just lifting or raising this. Okay. And what you want to do is accentuate the noise. So you're going to raise it. And then you're going to go find it. So basically when you play it back and there's a preview monitor in here. I'm using Incubate to send you a message. Um, it should get much, much louder as you find it. So once you're there or really close. I'm using Incubate. It is super loud now. That's what I found. And then to destroy it, you take it all the way down. And I say it was around 200 here. Um, I'm using Incubate to send you a message 10 years into the future. So it's still there just a little bit. And that's where the channel strip effect is really, really nice is you can apply other options to it. It's a pretty deep effect. When it comes to these, if I leave uh, my audio suite, I'm not gonna hear that I reduce this. You need to render it. You can render it in audio suite. It's super fast. I usually do it there because by the time I close everything out, it's already rendered. You can also use your render effect, okay? Now, if there's a couple other straggler clips that also have this, I can save this as a template, usually to a template spin, and I'm gonna save it to my sequences bin. And just go back to audio suite here. So in your audio suite tool, any of your effects tools, you're gonna get an icon, effect icon, just like you do for visual effects. You just drag that to your bin, give it a meaningful name. And then if you need to add it to other clips, you can just like you would other um, effects. So I just added it to an effect, a clip that doesn't need it, but there we go. So just drag and drop the effects icon from the uh, interface, okay? And you can do that with the audio EQ. You can do it also with the track effects. Okay? So I've gone a little over, but I wanna see if anybody has any questions that they need clarification on, or if there's other questions. It's something that we can, when we reboot after a break, we can create some sessions on it. So Don, are there any questions? Let me check, uh, Marianne. It looks like we do have a couple that have come in. One, can you define checkerboard? I've heard the term before, but don't quite, I, I don't quite understand what it means. <laughs> yeah. Um, sure. Yeah, and that's what we covered last session. But essentially, it's in this scene um, between these two characters, there's a, the dentist and then Mary. Um, the, the dentist has his own, or Mary has her track. And then the dentist, when he's speaking, has his track. So especially if it's a back and forth conversation, it starts to look like a checkerboard. So the best example of the checkerboard as a visual reference is A2 and A1 here. So you can see right here, they're going back and forth now, back and forth. So yeah, and it's just, we call it that because uh, it's a lot of times in a conversation. But obviously if you have more characters, your checkerboard starts getting more complex because you want to give each character their own track so that you can apply a, uh, let me right click on this, a track effect just to that voice. Mm -hmm. Hopefully that answers that. Uh, we got a thumbs up, so it looks like it did. So that's great. 
Let me see any other questions that have come in here. One other question, I'm just looking for advice. If I'm doing a sequence where it's totally silent, what sound should I use for ambient sound in the background? Yeah, hopefully whoever uh, was recording audio in the field has some moments that are quiet where there isn't a lot of chatter. Uh, otherwise, sound effects, just ambient sound effects. It can be just, uh, you'll see like ambient sounds that's like air conditioning or something like that. If it's in like a room or an office, you can use like nature sounds if it's supposed to be in the country or something like that. But just, and there's different room tones. But ideally, if you can just, and if you're out shooting yourself or recording the audio, just get a couple minutes. Um, I, the more, the better, because then you don't have to cut it together as much. But record the environment. All right. Thank you for that. Let's see if we have any other questions that have come in. I think that is all we have at this point. So let me go ahead and take the screen back. Um, as Mary Ann mentioned as well. Um, so this is our last session until our, our next semester, which starts October 21st, 2021. We do appreciate your feedback though. So please drop us a note at liveonlinelearning at avid.com because um, we love your feedback and that'll help us create the new content going forward as we're looking to come back with a, a new layout and some new little things to make it a little more intuitive. So we uh, look to have everyone back October 21st. So Marianne, we get a little bit of a pause to start working on the next segment. So uh, with that, I'll let everybody get back with their day or evening. So thank you, Marianne. Appreciate it. Thanks, guys. Take care. See you soon.